In this video, we're going to be talking about area between curves. In the previous chapter, we defined and calculated areas of regions that lie between the graph of a function and the x-axis. In this section, we will find areas of regions that lie between the graphs of two curves. Suppose f of x is greater than or equal to 0, and g of x is greater than or equal to 0, are both continuous functions on the closed interval from a to b, and f of x is greater than or equal to g of x on the closed interval from a to b. The region between them, bounded by a and b, is given by... Before I continue on with that, let me graph what we are describing here. So here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis, and I have some curve f of x here, and I have some other curve g of x. And I'm looking at this on the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. And previously, we've come up with ways to find the area underneath the curve of f of x. And so I'm going to highlight that in pink here. And we have created a definite integral that would allow us to find that area. Similarly, we found a definite integral that would allow us to find the area between the x-axis and g of x. And in this section, we're going to be interested in finding the area between these two curves that I'm highlighting here in yellow. So how do we go about doing that? I'm going to label this highlighted part A so that area is equal to the area under f of x minus the area under g of x. So if I take the pink area and I subtract off the blue area, that will leave me with the yellow area, which is what we're looking for. And so previously, we knew that the area under f of x can be given by the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. And the area under g of x, we can denote that with the definite integral from a to b of g of x dx. And based off the properties of integrals that we've learned, it turns out that we can combine this into a single definite integral. So the area underneath the curve, in other words, that yellow highlighted area, we can find that by creating the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So it turns out that this relationship also holds true even if the functions are not positive or above the x-axis in this picture, like in this picture that I've drawn for you. So let's see what that looks like even if the functions are not above the x-axis. So here's a graphic that shows two curves, f of x and g of x, and notice that g of x falls below the x-axis for certain values of x. And so we can approximate this area here that we're calling S with methods we've used previously. So we divide S into n strips of equal width, then add the areas of the strips together. We can see that for the ith strip, the width of this strip is delta x. So here I have my rectangular strip on the ith subinterval, and it has a width of delta x. And its height is the f of x sub i star minus g of x sub i star. So I have some x value, and we're calling it x sub i star. Remember, that's our sample point. And if I plug that x value into my f curve and into my g curve, even if g of x sub i star is negative, if I subtract these, that will still represent the height of my rectangular strip. So by making the width smaller and smaller, in other words, we're having n go off to infinity, the approximation becomes close to the actual area. So s is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i star minus g of x sub i star. And 
because we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity, oops, I forgot to multiply by delta x, that's the width of each of these rectangular strips. And so because we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity, as we saw previously, this turns into the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. And that was the same integral that we saw earlier. So this is a nice illustration that shows that we can find the area between two curves regardless of whether the curves are above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So here in this purple box, it says the area A of the region bounded by the curves y equals f of x and y equals g of x and the lines x equals a and x equals b where f and g are continuous and f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all x values in the closed interval from a to b is given by the formula capital A equals the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. Let's go ahead and look at an example now. Example 1 says find the area of the region bounded by y equals x plus 6, y equals x squared, and bounded on the sides by the lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. So it's going to be helpful in these scenarios to at least kind of picture what the graph of these curves are going to look like. y equals x plus 6 is a linear function, and its y-intercept is 0, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is right here. And it has a slope of 1, so there is my linear function graphed. And then I know that y equals x squared is a quadratic function, which means that its graph is given by a parabola. Now, we are bounded by the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those vertical lines, which are here and here. So basically, I'm looking at y equals x squared on the domain from 0 to 2. If I plug in 0 into that, my output is 0. If I plug in 1, my output is 1. And if I plug in 2, my output is 4. So my quadratic looks something like that. and now I can hone in on the area that we're looking for. So here's the area that we are searching for, and we want a numerical value for that. And we could always, because we have it graphed, we could always approximate it now because we have these grid lines. So one of these represents one square unit of area. So if I wanted to approximate this, there's one here, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven here, and then we have some partial ones. Oh, here we have eight, and then some partial ones. So it should be at least eight if we're calculating our area. So let's see what happens. We have this formula that the area is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x. And remember, f of x is the function that's on top here. So let's go ahead and plug in our limits of integration. My lower limit of integration is 0, and my upper limit of integration is 2. And the function that's on the top here is x plus 6. And then we're subtracting off the lower function or lower curve. And in this case, that's x squared. From here, now we can integrate like we have been. So we take the antiderivative of each of those terms. And I'm evaluating this with x equals 2 and x equals 0. OK, so let's go ahead and plug in 2. I have 2 squared plus 6 times 2 minus 2 cubed over 3. And what's nice about this is our lower limit of integration is 0. So I'll go ahead and show it. I'm evaluating each of these things at 0. But ultimately, it's just going to be 0 for that half. So I'm just going to say that that all ends up simplifying to 0. And 
2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 times 2 is 12, and then we have minus 8 thirds. And if you simplify that, you should end up getting 34 over 3, and this represents our final answer. And 34 over 3 is equal to 11 and 1 third. So remember, we were counting these. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Maybe I'll say these two are about 9. Give me a ninth one. And then maybe 10 and 11. So that wasn't bad for our approximation when we were kind of just looking at it visually, but we do end up getting the exact answer of 34 over 3. This next example wants us to find the area of the region that is enclosed between the curves y equals x squared and y equals x plus 6. And notice that this example is different than the previous one because we're not bounded by vertical lines. So let's see why that is. If I graphed x plus 6, we have a y-intercept of 0, 0,6 and a slope of 1. So my graph is going to look something like that. And then y equals x squared, we saw previously that it went through the origin. So notice that I'm now graphing my parabola and my linear function. And we're not given vertical lines because these two graphs intersect each other. And we have this region that's bounded by these two curves. And I know that it's this particular region here because if I argued that it was this upper region above here, that region is infinite because the parabola goes on forever. So this is the only place on our graph that makes sense because that is the only one that is giving us the finite area that we're looking for. So that's what we want to find. Now, this was really nice because I was given grid lines. And so visually, I can kind of see where these two curves intersect and one of the intersection points is here, and one of the intersection points is here. But we're not always going to be given a graph with grid lines, and we're not always going to be visually able to see where those intersect. So we need to use algebra to figure out where they intersect. So let's do that. We have these two curves. My parabola here is y equals x squared, and my line here is y equals x plus 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to each other since they're both equal to y. And if I do that, I get x squared equals x plus 6. And from algebra or from a previous math class, we should be able to solve this. So if they're equal, I'm going to move everything over to one side of my equation. Now this becomes a quadratic equation. And we can factor that. This should factor into x minus 3 times x plus 2, and that's equal to 0. Now I can use the zero product principle and set each of these factors equal to 0. And if I solve, I get x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. And that does line up with what I'm seeing visually. So one of my intersection points is occurring at x equals negative x equals 3, and then the other one is occurring when x is equal to negative 2. Now, the reason that I needed to find those values is because this highlighted region, the area A, A is equal to my definite integral from A to B, and in this case, A, or my lower limit of integration, is negative 2, and my upper limit of integration is positive 3. So that's why we needed to find where those curves intersected. And now, 
Previously, like we said, we knew that our upper curve or the curve that's on top is x plus 6, and then the curve that's beneath that is x squared, and we're integrating this with respect to x. We already found the antiderivative of this in the previous example. It was x squared over 2 plus 6x minus x cubed over 3, and the only difference now is we're evaluating this with different limits of integration. Our upper limit of integration is x equals 3, and our lower limit of integration is not x equals 0, it's x equals negative 2. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've plugged in my limits of integration and done a little bit of simplification, but uh, when we simplify this, this ends up equaling 125 over 6, and that is approximately equal to 20.833. And so there is our area between these two curves. That yellow highlighted area there is 125 over 6.